This is the service of prayer and preaching for the fourth Sunday after Pentecost, January 30th, 2022. If you have to ha happen to have a hymnal at home, you can look in pages 260 to 267 in the Lutheran service book. Otherwise, there's a link down below in the uh, notes in the description to a copy of the bulletin. We begin with the opening versicles. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Together we say the words of the Old Testament canticle. The Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. With joy will you draw water from the wells of salvation. And you will say in that day, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, proclaim that his name is exalted. The Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitants of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. The Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. We continue now with the readings from Holy Scripture. The first lesson is from the first chapter of Jeremiah, beginning at verse 4. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am only a youth, for to all to whom I send you, you shall go, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have set you this day over the nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In, In your, your righteousness, righteousness deliver, deliver me and, and rescue, rescue me. Incline, incline your, your ear to me and, and save. save. Be to me a rock of refuge to which I may continually come. You have given the command to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue, Rescue me, O oh my God, from, from the hand of the wicked, from the, wicked, from the, the grasp of the unjust and, and cruel man. man. For you, O oh Lord, are my hope, my trust, O oh Lord, from my youth. Upon, Upon you I have leaned from before my birth. You are he who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second lesson is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning at verse 31. I will show you a still more excellent way. 
If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. But the greatest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus went down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and he was teaching them on the Sabbath, and they were astonished at his teaching, for his word possessed authority. And in the synagogue there was a man who had the spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out with a loud voice, Ha! What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him down in their midst, he came out of him, having done him no harm. And they were all amazed and said to one another, What is this word? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And reports about him went in, out into every place in the surrounding region. And he arose and left the synagogue and entered Simon's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was ill with a high fever, and they appealed to him on her behalf. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her, and immediately she rose and began to serve them. Now when the sun was setting, all those who had any who were sick with various diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And demons also came out of many, crying, You are the Son of God! But he rebuked them, and would not allow them to speak, because they knew that he was the Christ. And when it was day, he departed and went into a desolate place. And the people sought him and came to him, and would have kept him from leaving them. But he said to them, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns as well, for I was sent for this purpose. And he was preaching in the synagogues of Judea. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Together we speak the responsory. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Together we recite the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant, or maidservant, his ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. 
Together we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Together we pray the prayer that our Lord has taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We now continue with our meditation on the readings from today's scriptures, specifically from the epistle reading, 1 Corinthians chapters 12 and 13. Well, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, if we can say one of many things about the internet. One of the great things about it is that there exist on almost every social media platform out there, pages and groups for almost every piece of popular culture that we enjoyed when we were younger and that we enjoy now. Are you feeling nostalgic for Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood? Well, you can find Facebook groups that are dedicated to Mr. Rogers' fans. How about classic G.I. Joe? It's there. Maybe like me, you grew up with Arthur, which is now celebrating 25 years of being on the air. Well, there's Arthur groups. Do you like Star Trek? Maybe you like the original series. Maybe you like Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, Enterprise, Picard, that other one that I haven't seen because I'm not paying CBS money. Well, there's Facebook groups for fans of all of those series within Star Trek and for Star Trek as a whole. How about Star Wars? Well, there's groups for the people who just like the original three. There's people who like the original three plus the prequels. And then there's groups for people who like all of them that they made. And what about, you know, wanting to find groups dedicated to the music you enjoyed? Well, you can find myriad of those. And I'm not even going to get started on Disney. There's so much Disney fandom out there. You can find a group covering any aspect of it that you want. The point of all this is that anything that you remember fondly, you can remember again. And sometimes you can even interact with the people who worked on the shows you liked or who played on the albums you enjoyed. And they'll actively post things that you can then respond to on the page. It's kind of neat. And it's sometimes allows you to see a side of the people and the production processes that made your childhood that you wouldn't otherwise be privy to. Which brings me to something rather surprising that appeared on the Reading Rainbow official Facebook page on February 12, 2013. And yes, I watched Reading Rainbow religiously as a kid. I now listen to LeVar Burton's podcast, which is like Reading Rainbow for adults. It's kind of good. Um, And yes, I went back and looked this up because I remember when I saw it on Facebook, I could not believe that it had been posted there. And the post was an image file of the following words. This is what it said. It said, love, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. Love is not rude. Love is not selfish. 
It cannot be easily angered. Love remembers no wrongs. Love never gives up. Love never stops trusting. Love never loses hope. Love never quits. Love never fails. Does that sound familiar to you? It should. You just heard it a little while ago. Now, I couldn't find what translation they were using. In fact, they didn't even cite this properly on their Facebook post. They just put these words. But this is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8. And I know that you've heard these before, not just this morning, because these particular verses from 1 Corinthians are rather popular with a lot of different people, religious and not. They're especially popular at weddings. In fact, these are right up there with uh, Ephesians 5. I think these might be even more popular at a wedding than Ephesians 5, because after all, what is a wedding in our popular imagination but a celebration and indeed a monument to the love of two people for one another? Because we love the idea of love, after all, and love gets said a lot in these couple of verses. But there's a question that comes with this, and that is, what is love? Reading Rainbow asked in the post, what does love mean to you? And I'll ask you the same question with a little tweak. What is love? What does it mean to you? There are a lot of answers out there to that question that probably spring to mind. If you're sort of into the electronic dance music scene, probably, uh, and also lots of memes, um, you'll probably be thinking of that one song that says, what is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. You're probably singing along at home because that's all been ground into our brains. Or maybe if you're of a certain generation or you like music from the 60s and 70s, probably thinking of the Beatles, all you need is love. Love is all you need. Uh, from all you need is love. Yeah, well, you know it. Or maybe you're thinking of the association. Uh, everything is love, love, love. Yeah, well, I grew up with the greatest hits in my house as a kid. I know all those songs. So you probably have heard that too. Or if you're watching current discourse, you probably know are the ever popular current phrase, which is also a tautology, a tautology being a term that is a redundancy in logic. Love is love. And uh, if you follow people like Lynn manuel Miranda on Twitter, you'll probably have seen things like love is love is love is love is love is love is love. It doesn't really explain what love is because it defines it in terms of its own self. But that's often something people say with regard to what love is. But this isn't what Paul's really talking about here. He certainly isn't speaking in terms of tautologies. And he's also not talking about romantic or erotic love. So what's Paul talking about? Well, in his letter to the Corinthians, Paul, as we learned last week, is talking to a church in conflict. The members of the Corinthian church are not showing love to each other, but instead are abusing one another. The wealthier, more powerful members of the congregation are pushing the poorer members around. People are being kept from properly observing the Lord's Supper. And there are all kinds of bad behavior going on. So Paul is trying to explain to them what a loving congregation looks like. People in a loving congregation, a congregation that shows love to its members, are patient and kind with one another. They do not envy or boast. They are not arrogant, nor are they rude. They do not insist on their own way. They're not irritable or resentful. They do not rejoice at wrongdoing, but they rejoice with the truth. People in a loving congregation bear all things, they believe all things, they hope all things, they endure all things. Their love never ends. So Paul's talking about what love is, but in reality here, right, he's really talking about what the Corinthians ought to be. They're not showing love this way. That needs to change. But the question, what is love, still goes unanswered. And before we learn the answer to that question, 
I want you to think. Have you ever not exhibited love the way that Paul describes it? I think it's safe to say that we all fail in the expression of that kind of love. We've all been short with one another. We've all been envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. Certainly, we've all had moments where we've been quick to snap at our brothers and sisters in Christ when we shouldn't have. We've been irritable. We've adopted my way or the highway attitudes. The church is not immune to being the opposite of what Paul envisions. So how is it that the church can show love in the way that Paul speaks about love? Well, I think the important thing for us to remember is that the love that Paul is talking about isn't a what, but rather a who. The Apostle John, in his first epistle, really answers the question for us. And this is what John says. I love it when the Bible answers its own questions. John says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world, so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. That's 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 12. So God is love. And this sort of love is seen through Jesus' death and resurrection to end the power of sin, death, and hell, and on account of which we can now love aright. The congregation at Corinth cannot have or display the love that is patient or kind without boasting or selfishness if love himself is not present with them. Only one who trusts in the God who is love can love others in this way. There's no faith there. There's no change of heart. Otherwise, one who is without it is indeed as useless and empty as a clanging gong or noisy cymbal, as Paul says. If he's trying to speak and yet has not love, he's useless. So Paul's statement here about what love is is not a celebration of what love is, but of who love is. And it should serve to aid us in our living in love, too. When we forget Jesus, or we don't have his love in the forefront of our minds and in our hearts when interacting with others, when we don't think about what he has done for us, and really how little we deserved it. When we're not looking at everything through the lens of his great and sacrificial love, a love that looks like this. and a love that looks like that for us, then it is very hard, indeed, it's nigh impossible, to have the kind of love that Paul describes. So my brothers and sisters, having heard all this, let us live with that sort of love, that sacrificial love, trusting in Jesus and his love the whole way. You may still be imperfect, we slip up. I slip up. And I know you do too. We all do. It's almost guaranteed that we're going to. But in spite of that, we trust the one who loved us so much that he died and rose for us. We can still reflect his love to others. We can still take the love that he showed us and show it to other people. Loving them with the kind of love that Paul describes when we trust in him. Amen. 
And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Now we have the prayers for the church. So my brothers and sisters, I invite you to join me in praying for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Creator, your Son commanded demons and they obeyed him, so that afflicted people were set free. Cast out the forces of darkness, both open and hidden in our world. Give courage, faith, peace, and relief to our brotherhood throughout the world who suffer for the sake of Christ. And hold your children in your care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, your Son taught with authority. Through those called into his holy ministry, use that authority to forgive sins, strengthen faith, and empower lives of good works, that the people of this world would see your love in us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive our sins, Lord, especially the false acts that cannot pass for real love. Enable us to reflect your love, which is patient and kind, which does not envy or boast, is not arrogant or rude, and does not insist on its own way. Fill our lives with good works that truly care for others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life, we pray for parents as they raise their children, that you would give every father and mother zeal that points constantly to your ways and your forgiveness. Fill all children with obedience, respect, and love for their parents. Comfort those couples who desire to have children but are not able to. And strengthen and protect all expectant mothers and their babies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you know all things, and the words of your mouth stand over nations and over kingdoms, able to pluck up and break down, destroy and overthrow. Rule by your might that our nation may be governed and preserved. Do not let us be dismayed as citizens in this world or of your kingdom, for you are king above all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, arise. Forget not the afflicted, but hear their desires and strengthen their hearts, especially Paul and Catherine, Diana, Laura, Nicholas, Jason, Magdalena, Eleanor, Donna, Jason, Dan, Bella, Rick, Ginny, Susie, Paul, Keith, Carolee, Bill, Teresa, Marie, Nate, Marie, Don, and Audrey. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we praise you for Mary and for Raymond and for all who have lived and died with faith in Christ and who now rest in your presence. Unite us with your Son and with those saints as we eat and drink of his life-giving body and blood at this altar when we come together next. Grant us repentant hearts when we receive your gifts and strengthen us to care for the needs of others in the way of Christ our Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we command all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray the colic of the day. Almighty God, you know we live in the midst of so many dangers that in our frailty we cannot stand upright. Grant strength and protection to support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you've caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. 
Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Together we say Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you've kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and from every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Together we recite the words of the New Testament canticle. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Raised from the dead, he will never die again. Death has no more dominion over him. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia, alleluia. Dying, Christ dies to sin. Once for all, living, he lives to God. Count yourselves as dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia, alleluia. And now receive the Lord's blessing. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for tuning in this morning for our uh, little digital devotional here while we're all snowed in from Winter Storm Keenan. Uh, if you have any questions for me or if you need anything from us, please email the church office or give it a call. We'll check the, uh, the phone inbox uh, from our cell phones and also check the email too. Uh, otherwise, if you call the church and get the answering machine, you'll get my phone number there if you need to give me a call. Uh, I hope you're staying warm and that you're staying well and staying safe. And I look forward to seeing you all at Messiah Lutheran Church very, very soon. God's blessings on your week.